Hello everyone. In this video we're going to talk about the composition of compounds. And on the left side of your screen here is a photo of a sample of calcium nitrate. And as we should all know by now, calcium nitrate has the following formula. CaNO3 in parentheses subscript 2. Now if you weren't able to write that formula given the name of calcium nitrate, you might need a little bit more practice with uh, naming and writing formulas for ionic compounds. And fortunately, I do have a video for that, and I'll provide a link for it down there in the, in the description box. Uh, but one of the most important uses of calcium nitrate is as a component of plant fertilizers. Uh, but the main element that is of interest to a plant for, uh, in, that is in calcium nitrate is the nitrogen. So the nitrogen is a very important plant nutrient. It promotes the growth of leaves. It also promotes the growth of vegetation. And uh, so suppose, what if we wanted to calculate how much nitrogen is in a given sample of calcium nitrate? Well, using a couple of terms that I'm going to discuss in this video, uh, we're going to figure out how to do problems like that. So one of the main uh, tools that helps us do these kinds of problems is called mass percent composition. So mass percent composition is the percentage that one element contributes to a compound's total mass. So to calculate the mass percent composition of an element in a compound, what you're going to do is you're going to take the mass of the element of interest that is in one mole of your compound. You're going to divide that by the mass of one mole of your entire compound, and you're going to multiply that whole term by 100%. So let's do an example where we calculate mass percent composition, shall we? So this example tells us to calculate the mass percent composition of oxygen in CO2. So again, our numerator, that's going to have the mass of oxygen in CO2, the mass of oxygen in one mole of CO2. So the molar mass of oxygen, according to our periodic table, is 15.9994 grams. And we're going to multiply that whole thing by 2 because there are two oxygen atoms in CO2. So that's our numerator. And our denominator is going to have the the mass of one mole of CO2. So that's going to be the numerator plus the mass of carbon in CO2. So we're going to have 2 times that 15.9994 grams and we're going to add that to the mass of one mole of carbon which according to the periodic table is 12.0107 grams. And then so again our numerator has the mass of oxygen in one mole of CO2 and our denominator has the mass of CO2, the mass of one mole of CO2. <laughs> so we're going to take this whole term and we're going to multiply it by 100 percent and our final answer is going to be, like I said, I always encourage you to do these by yourself before you move on any further, uh, but the final answer is going to be 72.70 percent oxygen. So that is how you calculate the mass percent composition of an element in a compound. And one of the most useful things about mass percent composition is that it can be used as a conversion factor. And it can be used to convert between the mass of a compound and the mass of an element that is in that compound. So for instance, a moment ago we saw that the mass percent of oxygen in CO2 is 72.7088% so that means we have a 72.7088 to 100 ratio of oxygen to CO2. So that ratio could take on the following form. It could be a uh, we could we could um, we could do it in terms of grams. We could say that we have 72.7088 grams of oxygen to 100 grams of CO2. Uh, it could be milligrams. It could be kilograms. It could be any unit of mass as long as those two units are the same and as long as it is a 72.7088 to 100 ratio. So how might this ratio look in a conversion factor? Well, it could take on the form of two conversion factors. Uh, suppose you were, you were starting out with the mass of CO2 and you wanted to get the mass of oxygen in CO2. Well, you would put your 100 grams of CO2 on the bottom and then your 72.7088 grams of oxygen on top or it could be the opposite. You could be uh, you could be starting out with the mass of oxygen and converting to the mass of CO2, in which case you would put your 100 grams of CO2 on top and your 72.7088 grams of oxygen on the bottom. So in the following slide, what we're going to do is we're going to do an example uh, where we use mass percent composition as a conversion factor. 
So this problem says that it is recommended that an adult male takes 11 milligrams of zinc per day. What is the mass of zinc sulfate, or excuse me, what mass of zinc sulfate with the formula ZnSO4 is required to meet this recommendation? Zinc sulfate is 40.51% zinc by mass. So in this example, mass percent composition has already been calculated for us, so we can go ahead and skip that step. All we have to do is use it as a conversion factor to convert from the mass of zinc to the mass of zinc sulfate. So again, we start out with our 11 milligrams of zinc. And then in our conversion factor, what we're going to do is we're going to put milligrams of zinc on the bottom. And we're going to, uh, to put milligrams of zinc sulfate on top. And since our mass percent composition uh, is 40.51%, uh, that means that we have a 40.51 to 100 ratio by mass of zinc to zinc sulfate. So our 40.51 milligrams is going to go on the bottom. And our 100 milligrams is going to go on top. And let's just go ahead, as always, and make sure that our units cancel. We have milligrams of zinc canceling with milligrams of zinc, and we're left with milligrams of zinc sulfate. And our final answer is going to be 27 milligrams of zinc sulfate. So that is how you use mass percent composition as a conversion factor. Uh, but there's also another way to convert from the mass of an element to a mass of the compound uh, that has that element uh, without even having to calculate mass percent composition. And that's what we're going to uh, discuss in the next slide. And the way that you can do this is you can use chemical formulas as conversion factors. How do you use a chemical formula as a conversion factor? Well, you can use it to convert between the amount of a compound and the amount of an element that is in that compound. Remember that amount is different from mass. Uh, with mass, you're talking about grams or milligrams or kilograms. With amount, you're talking about the amount of molecules or the amount of moles of molecules or atoms. So for instance, uh, in, the, in a, mo a moment ago, we saw that the uh, formula for zinc sulfate is ZnSO4. So that formula actually has an inherent conversion factor within it. So that means that for every mole of zinc sulfate, we have four moles of oxygen. So we can use that ratio to convert from the amount of zinc sulfate in moles to the amount of oxygen in moles, or vice versa. So as an example, let's calculate the number of moles of oxygen in 6.2 moles of zinc sulfate. So we start out with our 6.2 moles of zinc sulfate and the inherent ratio that is in the uh, chemical formula for zinc, for zinc sulfate is a 1 to 4 ratio of zinc sulfate to oxygen. So I'm going to put 1 mole of zinc sulfate on the bottom and I'm going to put my 4 moles of oxygen on the top. So we're converting from moles of zinc sulfate to moles of oxygen. And our moles of zinc sulfate cancels with moles of zinc sulfate. And our final answer is 25 moles of oxygen. So again, we're converting from the amount of a substance, the, uh, from, the, from the amount of a compound to the amount of an element in that compound. We're not necessarily converting the masses of the two, but using molar mass, we can actually turn those amounts into masses, and that's what we're going to do. Uh, that's what I'm going to show you how to do on the following slide. So, for instance, so if we had the mass of a compound and we wanted to convert that to the mass of an element in that compound without having to calculate mass percent composition, uh, at, without having to calculate that, what we could do is we could let's suppose we were using zinc sulfate. Uh, so we could start out with the mass of zinc sulfate and we could convert that into the amount of zinc sulfate. And what would help us accomplish that is the molar mass of zinc sulfate. And then we can convert from the amount of zinc sulfate to the amount of oxygen. And this would be accomplished using the molar ratio, which is inherent in the chemical formula for zinc sulfate. And then once we have the amount of oxygen, we can convert to the mass of oxygen. And we can accomplish that using the molar mass of oxygen. So we can convert from the mass of a compound to the mass of an element or vice versa 
in this manner without even having to touch the mass percent composition. So let's do that in this example here. So this says, whoops, this says without calculating mass percent composition, cal calculate the mass of oxygen in 9.421 grams of zinc sulfate. So we start out with our mass of zinc sulfate, so that's 9.421 grams of zinc sulfate, ZnSO4. And using the molar mass of zinc sulfate, we can convert from grams of zinc sulfate to moles of zinc sulfate. So I'm going to put my grams of zinc sulfate on the bottom. And I'm going to put my moles of zinc sulfate on top. And I have already calculated the, uh, the uh, molar mass of zinc sulfate, but all you would have to do is just add up the molar masses which are in the periodic table of all of the elements that are in zinc sulfate. So for every one mole of zinc sulfate, we have, let's see, 161.472 grams. So 161.472 grams of zinc sulfate for every one mole of zinc sulfate. So now that we have moles of zinc sulfate, we can use that chemical formula as a conversion factor to convert from moles of zinc sulfate to moles of oxygen. So we have moles of zinc sulfate on the bottom, and we have moles of oxygen on top. And again, like we saw earlier, for every one mole of zinc sulfate, we have four moles of oxygen. This is because there are four oxygen atoms in every, uh, in every formula unit of zinc sulfate. So now that we have moles of oxygen, we have one last step to do. We have to convert from moles of oxygen to grams of oxygen. And we do that using the molar mass of oxygen. And for every one mole of oxygen, I'm going to put that on the bottom, we have 15.9994 grams of oxygen. So that was uh, a lot of conversions that we had to use. And uh, so let's go ahead and make sure that our units cancel out. So we have grams of zinc sulfate, and we have grams of zinc sulfate here. We have moles of zinc sulfate up here, and we have moles of zinc sulfate down there. We have uh, moles of oxygen canceling out with moles of oxygen, and we're left with grams of oxygen, which is great because that's what the problem asks for. And uh, our final answer is going to be, I have it written down here, it is 3.3, or excuse me, 3.734 grams of oxygen. So this is the mass of oxygen uh, that is present in 9.421 grams of zinc sulfate. And we did this whole thing without even having to calculate the mass percent composition. Now if you would rather calculate the mass percent composition, it's entirely up to you, uh, but there are two different ways to accomplish this task, so it, the choice is yours which one you want to do. Um, I would recommend picking one and just doing it uh, over and over again until you, you know, got it down pat, until you're fast enough to where, you know, when you're faced with it on an exam, you can just do it really quick uh, to save some time with the other, you know, for the other problems on the test that might be a little more challenging. Uh, but this is fairly simple, and I think it's also fairly intuitive. Uh, so um, good luck performing these calculations, and uh, let me know uh, if you need any help with anything. And uh, all right, you guys take it easy now.